33 things that surprise first time visitors to Japan. I'm Chris, this is Yellow Productions. I do travel guides that are fun, informative, and entertaining. This video, it was a live stream, but I had so many technical issues on the live stream. <clears throat> I'm actually recording this again, not as a live stream, so that y'all can get the best content that's not stuttering this way. So speaking of Japan, Japan is one of my favorite countries to visit. I've been there over 10 times, but the first time I traveled to Japan 16 years ago, I was shocked at so many things in this land of the rising sun, from the high-tech toilets, to the vending machines, to the tiny hotel rooms, to the crowded train stations. There were so many things I was shocked by. And so in this video, I want to share with you things that I was shocked by or surprised by, and that many other visitors I've talked to are surprised by, so that when you visit Japan, you're prepared for all of these things. So let's go ahead and start with number one, the first thing. Thing that you will be surprised by or that visitors are surprised by in Japan are that toilets have a bidet function. <clears throat> the toilets in Japan, they're typically called the washlet. Toto is the biggest brand, but toilets in Japan, nearly every hotel toilet is equipped with one of these. Uh, it has a bidet that'll clean you underneath. It'll dry your bottom. It'll make water sounds. It'll play music. It'll absorb odor. And sometimes the toilet seats, the ones that are more advanced, they'll have an infrared sensor that like when you approach the toilet seat, it'll actually open and it'll close when you leave the bathroom. The first time I sat on one of these toilet seats, the first time I was in Japan, I thought I broke it because when you sit on it, it runs the water a little bit to make sure it has hot water for when you use the bidet. And I sat in the toilet and I hear running water and I'm like, oh no, big fat American guy broke the toilet. The second thing that surprises first time visitors to Japan are the taxis and two things of the taxis. First, the taxi door. Take a look at the taxi door right there. When you approach a taxi in Japan, you do not open the door yourself. The driver opens the door automatically from the inside. If you try to open it as locked, it won't open. The second thing about taxis that surprise visitors is also just how nice they are. The Taxis in Japan will typically have like doilies and lace. The taxi drivers will drive with white gloves on. They'll be the nicest taxis you've driven any place or that you've ridden in, uh, though they are expensive. And by the way, if you're looking for Uber and Lyft, there is no Uber and Lyft in Japan. The third thing that surprises first time visitors to Japan are vending machines. Vending machines are everywhere and they are amazing. You'll find vending machines in Tokyo almost every 50 feet as you walk through the city. And when I say there everywhere. This was a vending machine uh, that we encountered when we were on our way to see the snow monkeys in uh, Nagano, Japan. And this is in the middle of nowhere. Like this is in some mountainous area and uh, there's like nothing for miles from this. But there is this vending machine because you might be driving by and you might get thirsty. And the selection in these vending machines is amazing. Hot drinks, cold drinks, drinks with ice. You can get soup. Uh, there's also vending machines with a whole bunch of weird things like used women's underwear that we really won't get into in this video since this is a family-friendly channel. All right. The fourth thing that surprised visitors when they come to Japan is vending machines at restaurants. There's many restaurants that the way you order is not actually by talking to somebody, but it's by walking up to a vending machine, putting your money in, pressing the button for what you want. It spits out a ticket. Then you go sit down and you put your ticket down. The waiter or waitress comes and picks up that ticket. And that is how you order. Um, the vending machines take cash. They make perfect change. They work. Uh, and these are at my favorite anti-social Japanese restaurant called Ichiran. And Ichiran Ichiran is set up so that you actually, you don't even have to see anybody. So when you get these tickets from the vending machine, you sit down in almost like a cubicle that has this uh, bamboo screen in front of it. You put your ticket down, they roll up the bamboo screen about four inches. So someone takes it. You can't see their face. You can just see their hands. They take it, they roll it down again. They make your ramen. They bring your ramen back. They roll up the screen four inches. They put your ramen there and roll it down. And so it's actually really great ordering at these vending machines in Japan for non-Japanese speakers, you don't have to talk to anybody, and you can get fed. So hey, that is a great deal. The fifth thing that surprised first time visitors to Japan is that there are convenience stores and drug stores everywhere. You know, in the US, sometimes we joke that there's like a Starbucks everywhere. You know, in New York City, you will find a Starbucks across the street from a Starbucks. But 
in Japan, you will find a 7-Eleven across the street from a 7-Eleven. There's a whole bunch of other Japanese convenience store chains like Lawson Station. Uh, um, and so it's not just 7-Eleven, but 7-Eleven, although it started in the US, it's now a Japanese owned company and it's so much better in Japan than they are in the US. Uh, and the name for convenience stores in Japan is called Konbini. So make sure you go in there. You could totally make a really good lunch at 7-Eleven in Japan. Uh, and it's not like the crappy rolling hot dogs uh, and nachos that you'll find at <clears throat> American 7-Elevens. The sixth thing surprise people going to Japan are the insane prices. Uh, and uh, yes, this is the land of the $20 cantaloupe melon. Those melons have a price of 1,990 yen, which is the equivalent of 20 US dollars. Fruit in Japan is really, really expensive. And the high end in Japan is really high, but sometimes people take it away to think that everything in Japan is expensive. Not everything in Japan's uh, really expensive. You can actually do a really good budget trip to Japan. You can find decent hotels in Tokyo for less than $100 a night. And if you know what you're eating, you can get good food for like $5 a meal uh, at some cheap eat chains in Tokyo. By the way, I've got a whole video about cheap eats in Tokyo. Uh, I'll put a link at the end and in the description of this video. You can watch that when you're done if you want to know about places to eat that the prices aren't insane like these $20 melons. <clears throat> Seventh thing the surprise visitors to Japan is excessive packaging, particularly in convenience stores. If you want to buy a banana at a 7-Eleven or a Japanese convenience store, it will look like this. It will be individually wrapped in a plastic bag. You will pay for it at the cash register and they will put it in Yes, another plastic bag for you. If you go to department stores, uh, their fruit will be individually wrapped. That then they will bag for you elaborately. That then they will put a tape on it. That then if it's raining outside, they will put another plastic cover around that bag to make sure that your bag doesn't get wet from the rain. Uh, it's surprising. Uh, and some of it though, like the cover for the plastic bag when it's raining is, is really quite nice. The eighth thing uh, surprised visitors to Japan is that stores close really early. Typical store closing time in Japan is like 7 or 8 p.m. Even when you're in Tokyo in a busy street where there's 100,000 people walking by every hour, those stores are still going to close at 7 or 8 p.m. And they close promptly. If they say they closed at 8 p.m., not 8.05, 8, 8 p.m. on the nose. Uh, and it's kind of like, it seems like when Japan's nightlife stuff starts, like the bars and the clubs, that's when all the daytime stuff closes. In the big cities, you'll find very few 24-hour supermarkets. The convenience stores will be open late at night, but most of the supermarkets in the big cities are in um, department stores, which typically close at 8 p.m. The ninth thing that surprises people is their ATMs close too. The machines you get cash from usually have operating hours. Uh, and when the ATM closes, like it really closes, they have to have like metal doors that roll down on them and the ATMs take holidays. I am not making this up. It is too silly to make up. So if you want to go to an ATM that doesn't close, go to 7-Eleven, 7-Eleven ATMs because 7-Elevens are often open 24 hours. Check out their ATMs and 7-Eleven ATMs often uh, take most international cards. Ten thing the surprise first time visitors to Japan is it's a mostly cash-based society. Japan has its reputation for being high-tech and futuristic, but yet digital payments still aren't accepted everywhere. And while they are getting better, and there's more digital payments and more credit cards accepted, cash is still king. I often get the question about um, train stations, if people can buy uh, train tickets and cards with credit cards. Uh, if you're in person and you're trying to load up this the prepaid Suica cards it's cash only at the train stations uh, but but the vending machines will take 10,000 yen bills which is the equivalent of a hundred US dollars and it will make perfect change so be prepared to carry cash around uh, when you're in Japan the 11th thing surprise visitors to Japan are the number of plates that they use. Uh, so, you know, here in the U.S., we often have like a dinner plate, like you get your meal and it's on like one plate and it has a bunch of things on it. Not so much in Japan. Everything has its own plate. This is a typical traditional Japanese dinner, like kaiseki dining at a traditional Japanese um, hot spring hotel. Uh, there's like 20 plates on this table. That's why I've got this look, because this look, uh, it's not I've been left home alone, but this look is that there's so many plates and each one, each plate has its own thing in it. So expect uh, lots of plates. And by the way, portion size in Japan, typically small. If you if you like or grow up on like Cheesecake Factory portions, uh, think like one tenth the size for the portion size in Japan. 
Something else that surprises first time visitor Japan is number 12 is that uh, the Japanese food is more than sushi. This is something the first time I went to Japan, I didn't know a lot about Japan and Japanese food. And I, I really thought I was gonna be hungry because I didn't like sushi all that much. And I'm like, what am I gonna eat? I brought like power bars and granola bars with me. I did not need them because I discovered that Japanese food is so much more than sushi. Tempura, katsu, gyoza, noodles, lots of different types of noodles. Right here uh, is a katsu don, which is a pork cutlet over rice with some egg. And then this is a flour noodle, this udon noodle in soup. Uh, this is kind of like one of my favorite combinations of things to get uh, when I'm in Japan. So definitely branch out and try the things that aren't sushi. The Thirteenth thing that surprised visitors to Japan <clears throat> is that the drink sizes are really small. Uh, and so this picture is not there for the noodles, but it's there for the drink cup. And I, I need to use a, a visual aid for this and say, so this is a typical American cup size. This is an In-N-Out Burger medium cup. Uh, that cup, and typically if you get soda at like a restaurant or fast food place, it'll just be one size. That cup is probably about this tall. It is half the height of this and probably half as wide too. Their drinks are really small. In Starbucks in Japan, they actually have a uh, smaller size than in the US. They have a short size, which is even smaller than the tall. And if you go to McDonald's and you get the orange juice, the small orange juice in Japan is smaller than the small orange juice in the US. I think it's like the size of a thimble or something like that. The 14th thing that surprised visitors when they go to Japan are plastic chopsticks. Uh, usually in the US, we end up with um, wooden chopsticks, which are really good for like holding slippery things. But to eliminate waste, they typically use plastic chopsticks. You can see me there holding a gyoza with these black plastic chopsticks, which if you're trying to pick up something like wet peanuts can be really, really quite hard. Fifteenth thing that surprised visitors to Japan is that drinking is a national sport, even more so in Japan, than in the US or in Australia. Uh, and so because drinking is so prevalent, um, the last train of the night, which is typically around midnight or 1 a.m., is typically known as the drunk train. Like everybody on that train is drunk. Uh, <clears throat> so if you don't wanna be on the drunk train, don't take the last train. Uh, but that's also why they have these capsule hotels, the hotels that have rooms that are like the size of a coffin, uh, because it's for people who drank too much, missed the last train, and uh, so they have to stay in a capsule hotel for five or six hours until the trains start running again. Sixteenth surprising thing is that there's no tipping. There is no tipping in Japan. I don't mean cow tipping. I mean tipping related to money. Uh, and in Japan, can, tipping is considered rude or people won't know what to do with it. So if you give a restaurant staff extra money, they'll likely be confused and just hand it back to you. <clears throat> um, and, uh, and so I actually... I think this is a good thing, personally. You know, I mean, I know we tip here in the U.S., uh, but I know most visitors to the U.S. that are from non-tipping countries are like, ah, what's all this tipping? You have to tip everybody. You tip your busboy, you tip the taxi driver, you tip the waiter. And in Japan, when nobody worries about tipping, I think the atmosphere is a whole lot more relaxed. Your waiter doesn't have to come over every five minutes to make you think that they still care about you, even though they really don't. Um, the price for your food is the price for your food. The waiter earns a fair wage. Everybody wins. Do not tip while you are in Japan. The 17th thing, uh, surprise first time visitor Japan, is that smoking in public is still a thing. Um, in the USA, it's hard to find places to smoke. Restaurants and bars are no smoking. Hotels are often no smoking. But in Japan, a lot of smoking places left. There's smoking vending machines. Restaurants and bars will often still have smoking areas. And hotels in Japan will often still have smoking rooms or smoking floors. So if a non-smoking room is important to you, you should really make sure that you're booking a non-smoking room when you go to Japan. Otherwise, you're going to have a hard time to sleep in that room that smells like cigarette smoke. 18th surprising thing is that people sleep everywhere, everywhere. On the train, at McDonald's, at the shopping mall, on your shoulder at the train. Uh, true story, uh, my mom and I, we were in Japan, we were riding a train in Tokyo, and uh, a Japanese guy was so tired he fell asleep and was literally sleeping on my mom's shoulder. The other Japanese guy sitting next to him woke him up to be like, hey, why are you sleeping on the American lady's shoulder? And he was like, oh, I'm so sorry. Um, but uh, they work such long hours that there's actually pride in Japan to being tired and they often boast about how little sleep they get. And actually, if they're so tired that they fall asleep at work, that's considered a good thing because they're working so hard and so you will see uh, sleep will 
peep sleeple, you will see people sleeping everywhere. 19th surprising thing is that hotel rooms are tiny. This is a picture of an actual hotel room in Japan. Uh, the bed is right next to the wall. That's the other wall. There's just a tiny little bit of space to walk through right there. Um, there's probably no room to open your suitcase on the floor. You have to open it on the bed, um, particularly in Tokyo and Osaka in the big cities, hotel rooms are small. In general, hotel rooms are smaller in Japan than they are in almost any country I've been to. Europe has small hotel rooms, but Japan takes it to a whole new level. Um, I will say not all hotel rooms in Japan are small. Take a look at the size when you're booking them. Hotel websites in Japan are often really good about posting how many square meters hotels are. This room's probably 12 square meters. Uh, I find for like a good American comfortable size room, I like them to be about 24 square meters or more. The 20th thing that surprised visitors to Japan is also in hotel rooms is that the pillows are hard. Uh, many times in many Japanese hotels, the pillows are not full of feathers. They are full of buckwheat, uh, which are kind of like sunflower shells. Uh, and um, they're supposed to allow for more air circulation, but they are the opposite of soft. If you don't like the buckwheat pillow, you can likely ask the front desk for a foam pillow or uh, a feather pillow. And if that's a big deal for you, you can also check before you go into the hotel that they have some feather or foam pillows. 21st surprising thing in Japan is that pools require you to wear a swim cap, all swimming pools. Uh, not just swimming pools where Olympic athletes swim, but swimming pools and hotels, they will require you to wear a swim cap. If you did not bring a swim cap on your own, they will have them to loan you and they'll typically give you swim goggles as well. I, that was one where I was like, I've, I have to wear I have to wear a what? I've, I've never worn a swim cap in my life. Uh, oh, and if you're gonna use the pool, you're gonna take a shower before you use the pool. Even if you just showered in your room, you're gonna take a shower again before you go to the pool so that other people know you took a shower. 22nd the surprising thing are toilet shoes. Uh, if you stay in like a traditional Japanese hotel or maybe you go over to somebody's house or you go to a, like an office in Japan, you will find slippers in the toilet uh, to bathroom, restroom. Sometimes they will say toilet on them, they often don't, but these are designed for you to wear when you are in the toilet room. Uh, definitely uh, don't wear those outside of the toilet, uh, and if you are visiting uh, a fellow Japanese person's house, make sure to take off your shoes before you go into their house. If you're staying in a traditional Japanese style room that has tatami mats on the floor, then you take off your shoes before you step on the tatami mats. The 23rd surprising thing is also about bathrooms, and it's that bathrooms in Japan still have squat toilets. You know, I mentioned that uh, they have like to the Toto washlets that have bidets and music and open and they're super high tech. Well, they also have these still, which are super low tech. You might find these in train stations, in the airport, in more rural areas. They're not very widespread, but you will encounter them. Typically, the bathrooms will have a sign on the stall that'll have like a symbol of like either regular Western toilet or one of these squat toilets. Um, yeah, if, if you don't know how to use this, uh, seriously, just find the different toilet. Uh, you'll find other ones. The other thing about public bathrooms, they typically do not have paper towels in them. Uh, and so uh, it's recommended to bring like a, um, maybe some uh, napkins from your hotel or a towel from your hotel to dry your hands when you're out in public. Japanese people learn to basically carry a handkerchief with them uh, from an early age so that they can wipe their hands uh, in public bathrooms. The 24th thing that surprises visitors to Japan are how crowded the train stations are. And yes, they really do push you onto the trains. Not everywhere, not all the time, but in Tokyo, in Osaka, at the really busy train stations at rush hour, they do have people to stand at the platforms to push you on the train because if they did not push you on the train, you'd never be able to get on the train because the trains are that full. If you take the trains or subway at rush hour, prepare to have no personal space. By the way, there's also this whole train etiquette about when you're on the train, you don't talk on the train, you don't put your butt in people's faces, how you stand, how you get on. If you want to know more about riding trains, I got a whole video about how to ride trains in Tokyo and Osaka. Um, links also in the description or at the end of this video. In my Japan playlist. The 25th thing that surprises people when they go to Japan are 
face masks <clears throat> everywhere, not just in hospitals or doctor's offices, uh, but people wear face masks everywhere all the time. Right here, uh, three Japanese businessmen wearing face masks, and they're not wearing them because they're sick. They're wearing them so that they don't get sick from you or they don't get sick from other people. In Japan, there's very little sick leave or often no sick leave. Japanese workers are expected to come to work all the time, even if they're sick. And so if that's the case and you're working in a place where there's sick people, then you might want to wear a mask too so that you don't get sick from them. Um, 27 thing that surprised visitors in Japan. Ah, I missed 26. 26 thing that surprised visitors in Japan is that everybody is always dressed up all the time. The men are in business suits, the women are in high heels from the early morning to the late at night, not because they work till 10 p.m. Well, some of them do, but they also have the like mandatory after hour social activities, which keeps them dressed up in their business attire through then. Women uh, also wear makeup like all the time. Even if they go to 7-Eleven or the grocery store, uh, they'll typically put on makeup before they go out. Now, if you're a visitor and you're coming and you're like, Chris, does that mean I have to wear a business suit? Or if I'm a girl, does that mean I have to wear makeup all the time? time. Uh, these things, the cultural things, really apply more to the Japanese people than the visitors. I I wear my Yellow Productions t-shirts when I go to Tokyo, uh, and I think I think it's all good. Uh, the 27th thing that surprised visitors to Japan is that everything is on time. The trains, the planes, the automobiles, the buses, it's all on time. Uh, if the train says it arrives at 2 o'clock, that's when it's going to arrive. If there's a train arriving on the platform at 157, that is likely a different train. And 202, that is another train. So if you're riding the train, make sure to be there on time. Dinner reservations, if you have a 6 o'clock dinner reservation and you thought, well, you might get there at 6.15 and it'd be all good, chances are they've already given that table to somebody else. Now, also, if you thought you were going to a hotel and checking in at 3 p.m., uh, like 3 p.m. check-in time, and you were going to get there at 2.50 and check in, they're probably going to have you wait 10 minutes. I know this from personal experience. It's happened many times. We get there, you know, because we're driving someplace, whatever, you get there a little early, and they're like, yeah, if you'd please sit there until it's check-in time, and then we'll get you when it's time to check in. You're like, well, this, I mean, I think it's just five minutes from now. Yeah, just please, please wait. Please wait over there. All right. The 28th thing that uh, surprises first-time visitors to Japan is the lack of trash cans. Um, there are very few public trash cans. You're expected to carry your trash with you and bring it back to your hotel or bring it back to your house or bring it back to your office. If you are looking for trash cans, you'll generally find them at convenience stores. You'll find them on like the big trains like the Shinkansens. You'll find them in department stores. You will often not find trash cans in public bathrooms because there are no paper towels, so there's nothing to throw away there. Um, the 29th thing that surprises visitors to Japan are purses and backpacks and all manner of things used to save seats. Uh, so people will put down their purse in like a Japanese food court on a table and then go order and nobody will take their purse. That purse will save their table. People respect it. Nobody takes it. And uh, it's it's amazing. Um, I have a I have a story about this. A coworker of mine. She was on uh, a train um, coming into Tokyo, and she left her laptop on the train. She forgot it on the floor underneath her seat and she was all panicking she went to the train staff and said like oh my god like like i just got off that train i left my laptop there can you call the train or call the next station so somebody can get it um and the train the train station manager was like really unexcited about the whole thing he was just sort of like oh what I mean, what train were you on? The one that just came here three minutes ago? Oh, well, that train's going to come back through the station two hours. Why don't you just why don't you just go back on it and take your laptop when it, the train comes back? And she's, like, looking at them all puzzled. And, you know, sure enough, two hours later, waited there. Train came back. She walked in the door. She got off, found her seat. And sure enough, her laptop was still there right exactly where she left it. Uh, I mean, the um, safety and the trust uh, is just amazing in Japan. The... 30th thing that surprised visitors to Japan is uh, little kids walking to school by themselves. Obviously, this picture is a group of kids right here, but it happens with little kids by themselves. Kindergartners, first graders, if you're around in morning hours, you will see them taking the bus, taking the subway by themselves and going to school at that early age. They typically have like a hat that identifies like their school, like a red hat or a yellow hat, uh, and they'll be wearing a uniform, uh, but they teach kids at an early age to be independent, and since it's such a safe place, nothing, nothing happens to them. 
the kids. The 31st thing that surprised visitors to Japan are French maids on the street, particularly in the Akihabara neighborhood of Tokyo. Um, you will see French maids everywhere. Why? Because maid cafes are a thing. These are cafes where the waitresses there dress up as French maids. They sing songs, they address you as master. Uh, OC Girl and I have yet to go to a maid cafe because maid cafes usually don't love you taking video in there. Um, and uh, But uh, you'll see them out in the street handing out brochures to direct people to where uh, their maid cafes are. The uh, 30... Second thing that surprises people in Japan is uh, Japanglish. This is a combination of Japanese and English, but uh, the Japanese have taken a lot of English words and Japaneseized them. Uh, so, for example, uh, McDonald's uh, is uh, Makudonorudo. Um, and Japanese people often speak that as if it's an English word, like if you're an English speaker, that you understand it because it's definitely not a Japanese word. If you want to get beer, that's biru. If you want to take the bus, that's the basu. If you want to get coffee, that's kohi. If you want to go to a convenience store, it's a konbini. If you want to know more about Japanglish and hear more about it, there's like a really fun music video uh, by Namui. If you just uh, search for Tokyo Bon, uh, you can see this video and it makes fun of Japanglish, but it was made by Japanese people too, and, and so they totally understand it. Uh, and uh, you'll see the t-shirt with English on it that doesn't make sense, but it's a, it's a big thing when you go to Japan. And number 33 uh, thing that surprises visitors when they go to Japan is just how helpful the Japanese are to foreign tourists. I feel like sometimes the Japanese get like a bum rap and being like unfriendly or cold. Um, they might not make small talk like some people are used to, uh, and their English might not be the best, but um, if you are lost, you can't find something, if you ask almost any Japanese person out in the street, they will go out of their way to help you. Uh, OC Girl and I, we were uh, lost, I, I mean exploring off the beaten path in Sendai, Japan, which is a city a couple hours north of Tokyo, and uh, we could not find the train station. We'd been wandering. It was late at night. It was dark. There was a lady walking up. We asked her in our poorest Japanese where the nearest Eki is, the train station. And she walked 15 minutes out of her way. She was walking this way. She turned around to walk us 15 minutes this way to the train station to make sure we got there and then continued back the way she was going. I mean, you won't find people in many countries in the world that'll go 30 minutes out of their way to help random tourists and visitors that they've never met before. Um, one time I was stuck on a train coming from Mount Fuji into Shinjuku. There were some issues with the tracks, but the train hadn't been moving for like 10 minutes. There was um, a lady on the train tracks that obviously looked in and saw this foreign visitor that seemed really confused. And she wrote on a piece of paper with big marker um, to say that uh, like there was, the train was broken up ahead. Uh, so that I, because she saw me and wanted to make sure that I knew that there was a problem. And I, so I like, wow, thank you very much. It's truly amazing. Um, so, uh, now take all these things and say, well, Chris, I mean, is it, is it, is it bad to go to Japan? Is it awful? Uh, Japan is amazing. I love Japan. It's my favorite country to visit. So if you are planning to go to Japan, well, there's probably more Yellow Productions videos that you should watch. Uh, you can click here for my whole Japan playlist. There's about a hundred videos in this place. Or if you just want to check out my video on cheap eats in Tokyo, Tokyo, you can click right here to watch it. As usual, I won't say goodbye because I'll see you in the next video.